Hi, this is Amanda with Confessions of a Naughty Mommy. I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial today on a cross stitch for your handlebars on your stroller or for the belly bar, which this is the belly bar, but this is an example of the cross stitch. And this is using a steering wheel cover that I purchased off of Amazon, and I'll provide a link for that. Um, I'm also going to be using a flat waxed cord. It's very important that the lacing you use is waxed. The lacing that comes with the steering wheel is very slick. Uh, it will not cinch down as tightly and it will not hold as well and your stitches won't be as consistent as they will be if you use the waxed cord. Um, I also have, I'm gonna be using my belly bar from my Stoka for my tutorial. But I also have a leather stitching needle, uh, two leather lacing needles that comes with the handlebar. I have my thimble, my extra steering wheel wrap, scissors, and my seam ripper. Now the, the stitching is a cross stitch and mine is thicker because I doubled up. I wanted it to be a heavier stitch. You could use a single, and I'll explain that here in a little bit. The particular brand that I use is the Mandela Crafts Flat Waxed Cord. And I just went ahead and bought the whole roll because I use a substantial amount um, to do it. I would say probably 12 feet of one line is needed. If you want to have a thicker stitch like I use on my belly bar and my handlebars. If you want a thicker stitch, I would definitely do two strands. So measure out 12 feet of your waxed cord, cut that, and then measure another 12 feet, which right now I'm just gonna do and try, when you cut it, try to cut it at an angle so it's easier to thread your needle. Okay, you're going to grab one of your shorter stitching needles that came with the steering wheel cover and you're going to thread it through. When th threading it through, only thread about two and a half inches and then come back and take your needle and split the thread like so. Okay, now that we have our needles laced, we're ready to begin like stitching. That. When we stitch, we and want that's if to you're going to be using a one left strand. side and a right side, and always try to maintain that your left no. needle will come back and stay on your left side. Two your right needle will go through, come back, and stay on I the right side. Not so we're going to start with our left side. Cinch down. Our left the needle is going oh. to with this wax come over the top and go through the right side cord. It will actually hold its shape pretty well if you give it a really hard tug. So go ahead and, and then thread it again with your second. Come through the bottom of the left side and up. Strand. And once again, your left side is back on the left side. You're going to come back across and go through the same way. But don't get that entwined. Now, as we go through, you're going to want to tighten. And on our left side, we're going to come back through the bottom. 
same as the first and end up on top. And then pull both sides and make sure that they are snug. And make sure that this is where you're going to start making sure that your sides come together evenly and stay consistent. Now, I like to start working on my left side. So once again, I'm going to take my left side, come over, go down to the second hole. and put that back on the left side. Now I'm gonna grab my right needle. I'm gonna go on the left side, go from the top to the bottom, pull it through. Then the immediate hole across, we're gonna go from under to up on top and then finish on the right side. And then once again, go back and tighten. And you may have to pull cords and or strands individually to make sure that they are all snug and tight. Now I'm gonna grab my left needle and the hole immediately across from that it comes out of. I'm going to go from under, come up, sorry, go over to the next hole down. So I came up out of this one now I'm going to come across and go down. And I'm going to continue this pattern. So right side will go across and down from the top to the bottom. and then go back up through the hole across from it. And now I'm gonna go through and tighten and make sure everything is straight across from one another. Now my left side needle is going to go across underneath and then tighten and make sure that it's a consistency from each hole to the next. And when I come out from this hole I'm going to come over and then set that needle to the side again. On the right side, over. and then under, straight across. And then make sure that everything, all the holes line up across from each other evenly and that everything maintains a consistency. And now we're quickly going to go through and it will be the same all the way down to the end.
Okay. I stopped when I have one hole left on each side before I tie it off and finish. And if you'll notice, I left some loose, some loose lines in here. So I can show you how to go back and correct for those. Now, if you don't have a seam ripper. Something else that can work quite well is a bobby pin. Now whenever you go through to tighten, if you are tightening right to left, because this is loose, if that's your loose one, you're gonna go below it the one, the next one that goes right to left and you're gonna pull it, and that will tighten. So this one right to left is loose. So I'm gonna go one down and tighten. And sometimes there will be one strand that is looser than the other, and so you have to get it and try to pull it individually. So once again, right to left, so go down one, and tighten. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. See that loose, how loose that is? Let's see if I can show you. Okay, so it goes right to left. Go down this one, just one. Get my bobby pin underneath it and pull and see how that tightens it up really nicely so and if you tighten one and you start getting gaps like this you have to go all the way down and this is why I said you really want to try to work little bits at a time and tighten as you go but sometimes it just loosens on its own and so you have to go back and tighten those sections and, and the bobby pin works surprisingly well. And every once in a while you gotta tighten the one individually. There we go. And the same on this side. See that one's a little loose, so come through. Left to right. Tighten the next one down. I had just done my last stitch from underneath, came up through the bottom, now I'm up top. And I'm going to take this side and go back across to the same hole and come up underneath and pull. So the final should look like that. Now I'm going to remove the threading needles or the lacing needles and I'm going to tie these in a box knot or a square knot. So I don't know if anybody's ever tied a square knot before. So left over right, pull tight, and now go right, oops, go right over left and pull tight. And then instead of clipping these with scissors, I am going to, and this will be much easier on something that's not the Stoka that has all these lovely ridges in it. I like to band up my excess 
take it to the side and then use the other end of my bobby pin to cram it down in there. And the square knot will be easier to undo if I want to take the lacing off and not destroy the lacing. So I can use it again for next time. <clears throat> and there you have it. There's the cross stitch. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send me a message. Give me a shout out. Let me know if you're missing something. And uh, make sure to check back often for new blogs, reviews, and tutorials. Like us on Facebook, Confessions of a Naughty Mommy. Have a good one. Bye.